Welcome back to Sound 101. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones, and sitting next to me is DD Steve. Hey. So, because DD Steve is in the house, that means this is a mailbag episode, and we're about to answer your questions. So, let's get started. Well, this is a mailbag episode where all the questions that we answer here on the show come from you guys, but unlike things in the past where we try to answer YouTube comments, this is all about answering things from the Twitter. So this is going to get strange, people. My Twitter question comes from Tony at Zebra Tape. The question is how to ensure that you're getting consistent recordings, audio recordings, across multiple interview setups, interviews in different locations, maybe a warehouse in one, a living room in the other, and best practices to make sure the sound is consistent and good. Often we often talk about use the gear you have, use the gear that is best for the situation, and always try to be kind of mindful of budgets and all that kind of stuff. That's how we typically approach things on this channel. Now with this question. This is where, like say you're doing a documentary and a sound mixer is hired in Atlanta and the producer flies out, tells the sound mixer, set up for this interview. Well, that producer is gonna take that footage and that audio files and they're gonna fly to New York. And the next day they have a different sound mixer. So how do you make sure the two sound mixers sound the same? This is where professionals buy gear because they know it needs to play well with what other professionals buy. You may see in a job listing a certain brand or certain gear type that is being listed and you're like, well, you don't need that for that setup. They do because the person hired before you had that setup and it needs the match. So this is why we have the S-Mic 2. The S-Mic 2 was meant to be a microphone that mimics the sounds of other microphones that allows you to really kind of move in that documentary space where your audio is going to match other microphones. As we try to make it as neutral as possible without all that pre-baked in EQ that other brands may offer. It may sound great in an isolated world, but when you're trying to play with other microphones, having a very flat neutral microphone is very important. Also, mic placement is your second biggest item there because if you've got bad placement, it doesn't matter what gear you bought because what's important is the person who's shooting after you, maybe in another city, is going to do the exact same thing also. And if we're all on the same page, if we're all working by the same book of techniques, we all get good audio that a documentary can then be cut together and no one's going to notice. So, and that's how you kind of ensure you get consistent recordings. Proper technique, training, practice, and doing the the industry standards when it comes to like the type of gear that you're buying. Just because I feel like that answer wasn't long enough, I'm going to throw something else in there as well. Oh, good. I think maybe you could abide by a sort of location checklist and just all the simple things. Like if you left the air conditioning on in one of your rooms and then you didn't in the other one, those are going to sound different and not going to cut together very well. Absolutely. And to wrap up that answer, Tony, by the way, you get a VLOV because you were the first one to ask a question that got answered in our little episode all about uh, Twitter Q&A. So thank you, Tony. Steve, I now have a question for you, and that is from Ian. Even though different kits serve different purposes, is there one type of mic that's a best jack of all trades? Booming, voiceover, music, etc. I would say this one, the S-Mic 2S, Andrew, by Deity Microphones. By uh, Deity Microphones? It's becoming a real kind of pitchy episode. I know, such homerism. But no, I mean, for real, uh, you've seen the episodes, you've heard this microphone, we put it through all kinds of insane tests. We did all the instruments, we did sax, guitar, drum kit, even with the high SPLs, like we were able to make this thing do that. We are clearly using them as basically voiceover mics or podcast style mics. And I think with both of our voices, these mics work really well. Yeah, mine's much deeper. You've got much more mid-tone and clarity, whereas mine does not. And yet, both of us sound great in this kind of uh, environment. Plus, it was designed for booming. It's low profile, so if you've got low ceilings, it's super lightweight, you're not going to get fatigued. And that's why we developed this microphone. We love the SMIC 2S. Yeah, you can literally put it in your pocket. Yes, you can. It's under six inches. Yes. And I've got a question now for you, Steve. That was a question for me. Oh. I've got one for you. How's that? That's a better one. This one comes from Dark Knight at P. Zambrana. Barana. Zamb- P. Zambrana. A bit of a rehash of an older question. How to get rid of buzzing in sound. Okay, so buzzing in sound, the first thing we need to do, identify the type of buzzing. Buzzing is a very generic term. Is it kind of a feedback buzz? Is it a ground loop hum? Is this a broken shield in a cable that's getting EMI or RFI kind of interference? Are you recording bees? Yeah. Are you recording bees? Is there a bee in your microphone that someone's unscrewed and put the bee inside of? Like Les Paul? True story. Look it up. Look it up right now. 
as soon as you identify that kind of feedback and the buzzing you're getting, typically it's like a step list as to what you can do to solve this kind of problems. So the most obvious one is change your cables. Changing the cables typically will affect almost 90% of the buzzing you get because you'll end up laying the cable in a different route that you laid it the first time. And that may be that you now have it separated from like electrical wiring. Mm. And that could have been your buzz. It could have been a shield in the cable. Well, now it's no longer there because you have a brand new cable. Those are your typical kind of buzzing sounds. I don't think you probably have a bee inside of your microphone, but you could be getting kind of a ground loop home. So you may want to go get some ground lifts for your outputs that go to your PA system, or you may want to get something like a ground lift for your recorder that takes the ground off the electrical wiring altogether. So you're just running off a of basic AC circuitry with just two pins kind of deal. It could also just be you have a cheap microphone that you are trying to overdrive with gain because your gain staging is all wrong. And the buzzing you're hearing is actually circuitry and the self noise of the circuitry. A lot of issues to be had, but again, identify, learn the problem, and then do the steps for that particular problem that you're having. That's great advice for life in general. It really is. Identify the problem, solve the problem. Okay. What am I asking you? Is your plug? So now we are on our last question of the day, and it is from Valentina V. Hey, Val. This question is to Steve, and that is, what are your favorite tools and plugins for audio sweetening? Okay, the essential mentions for us, I think, are Isotope RX, because yeah. we use it so much and it is so useful, it has gotten us out of all kinds of situations. Even the Elements we... version, right? Absolutely. There's also got to have a shout out for Waves plugins. They've been around forever and they have an insane array of plugins to serve any purpose that you need in, in terms of your audio post workflow, particularly relevant sort of on the music producer side of things. And then it's also essential to mention just Adobe Premiere. There are some incredible plugins packaged with the Adobe Creative Suite between Audition and Premiere. I think it's the same plugin package, but very good tools, very strong, very powerful, uh, will totally get done what you need to in terms of, if you're just talking about audio sweetening. So which particular plugins should they kind of learn first? Probably EQ. I think EQ is essential, yeah. And, and you should be familiar with like a parametric equalizer, see what it yeah. looks like. And then probably what, a compressor of some kind? Certainly. I mean, compression is one of those things that 90% of the people messing with audio are using compression and probably like 15% of them understand what they're doing. You know, there's so much to learn about it and there's a lot of nuance to it and you should watch some good YouTube tutorials. We should make it. We, we really do a should, compression we should episode. do a compression episode because you can quickly overdo compression and not realize it until you're already done. And then you're like, oh, okay, it's not great. So you're right, watch some tutorials, compression, EQ. Is there a third one they should be looking at? I think probably a de-esser. A de-esser is designed to remove sibilance. And all, all those your S sounds. S S's and SH sounds that can be really harsh depending on what your uh, frequency response to your microphone sounds like. Isotope RX obviously has a more powerful version of it that's more tweakable, but if you're just getting started, you, you don't want to spend any extra money on plugins. I think Premiere has got everything you need. Also, if you're looking at this list and you're dismayed by how much some of these plugins cost, please make sure that you go on Google and you're searching like free VSTs, free plugins. VSTs is virtual studio technology. Audio. Commonly, those are also audio plugins and there are a lot out there or find like sort of altered versions of the pro one that you can end up using. So there's a lot of options. So we don't have all the answers, but uh, Google does. Google does. All right, Andrew, the final question. If you had to rob a bank, how would you do it? Ooh, if I had to rob a bank, how would I do it? Uh, let's pivot. What's your favorite bank heist movie? My favorite bank heist movie? Um, Dog Day Afternoon is like way up on the list because the editing pacing with the conflict in the actual script is amazing. Like as soon as the scene gets hectic, camera gets hectic, the editing gets hectic, everything goes crazy. And when there's a calm in that movie, shots will linger uncomfortably long that make you feel like you're in that movie. Dog Day Afternoon is probably one of the number one greatest movies of all time. And it would probably make it then, of course, the number one bank heist movie because you said bank, not the best heist movie though. So what would be your favorite uh, bank heist movie? I think I would have to go with Heat. I feel like it's a super cliche answer and I'm a contrarian and I wanna pick obscure movies, but man, I watched Heat and it totally lived up to the hype incredible movie we've done some stuff about the sound on that movie but the sound yeah. of gunshots in that movie is just like you know notoriously like some of the most impressive like ominous sounding gunshots and really accurate as to what it would sound because they were actually just firing rounds in downtown los angeles 
Yeah, we should actually do a whole movie episode about like movies that people should watch for the sound design. Yeah, what could go wrong? Not Exciting, realistic. but no, no. Well, that is it. A special episode of Twitter edition of Mailbag is all wrapped up. Hit that subscribe button if you really do like this kind of content. If you really want to know when we post brand new videos every single week, you've got to hit that bell for notification so you are first and your phone will get that little bing when we post a brand new video. Hey, if you want to be a part of another episode in the future, you got to drop those questions down in that comment section below. We troll through there every single week, try to find brand new content so we can make videos that you guys will really enjoy. I just want to say thank you for watching. I'm Andrew from Deity Microns. He's Deity Steve, and we're out. Thank you. <laughs>